Hello, this is TurboDog702 for the Castlevania Symphony of the Night 80% tutorial. Obviously kind of a different look here. Um, what I'm going to be trying to do is showing off quite a few different ways that you can shield dash. I'm going to be using my own technique inside of here and showing off other ones that people do. And I'm going to be trying to insert footage of other people and their shield dashing methods inside of this video as well. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of get into it. Um, the first thing that you need to realize when learning any shield dash method is that it's going to be a little bit different for every person. Maybe you can find one that I'm not going to display here and maybe it'll work out for you. The most important things to keep in mind is that you want to try to maintain a rhythm. Like if you're, it doesn't matter how fast you can mash a certain way, like if you can mash really fast like this, it doesn't matter at all if Alucard keeps stuttering um, when he's trying to do his shield dashing and you're going to lose a lot of time for that. The other thing that's extremely important is that you're going to have to be able to gain access to movement, jumping, and attacking. Uh, if you can't do that with your method, you're going to be losing a lot of time in what I call transitional movement, which is, you know, when you're done shield dashing and you need to turn and hit somebody, if you're really slow on that, it'll really add to your time quite a bit over the course of a run. Even something like turning can eat up a lot of time, and I'm guilty of this as well. So make sure that you can do it consistently for long periods of time, because you're obviously going to put in quite a few attempts. So consistently, long periods of time, and be able to jump and attack while doing it as well. All right, so to this end, most of the time people have more than one way that they shield dash. I myself have three different ways that I do so, and I'll kind of go over those right now just to kind of explain to them. So the first thing that I do, which is kind of like a lazy method of one-handed, I guess you would say, is if you take a look at my controller, B right now is my shield button and Y is my backdash button. And what I can do for this method, this is my control method. This is whenever I'm at a place where I know I'm going to be doing a lot of combat or I'm not going to be doing it for a long time or basically I just need a lot of control or it's not going to be going for a very long time and I need to have access to my jump buttons and I attack. So the way I do this is really simple. I basically take the inside part of my thumb right here and I lay that on there and all I'm doing is almost just flattening out my finger. And I'm accentuating the motion here so you can see it, but over time you just kind of flop it down. And you can get pretty quick with this actually, and it's really consistent for me at least. Works out pretty well. The first method I will be covering is the simplest and easiest to perform. Start by holding the controller regularly and place your right thumb over both Y and B. Then push both buttons down in a natural motion. This will cause you to quickly press B then Y. Repeat the process and continue to mash both buttons as fast as possible. This method isn't very fast but allows you to safely control Alucard and is beneficial to use in tight spaces or when complex movements are required to clear a room quickly. Um, another thing that you can do, which is my second form of motion, which there's actually a few different ways people do this from what I understand, is what I call the Satorio method. It's the most basic form of one-handed shield dashing and probably one of the best. Uh, for me, basically, it's the same concept, except instead of flattening out your finger, which can be very tiring, and uses small count pounds in your finger rather than your actual arm, necessarily, you're going to be using your arm, near your forearm and such. And some people say that they can just vibrate their arm by tensing it, which maybe you can see that. By tensing my arm, I can mash like that. I have a hard time doing that. Um, but basically, you want to have a motion that's up and down or left and right. Or somewhere in between. And for me, that means for Satoru mashing, I'm basically setting my hand up in the same position. You know, I'm like... But this time, I want to have it open. Some people find it easier closed to do this. I find it easier when my hand is open. And all I'm doing is that chopping motion that I was talking about. And that's considerably faster for most people than the method I mentioned before, which is just the thumb flatten. But it's also a lot more strenuous on your body. Um, if your hand's open, you might not be able to gain control as well as you could normally. Um, so it runs into some problems. Another the second method the one I personally use most of the time, is one I sort of developed. Start by holding the controller regularly in your left hand and place your right thumb slightly on its side covering both the Y and B buttons. 
Then, move your wrist in a seesaw-like motion back and forth to press the Y and B buttons quickly. This method produces a shield dash speed that is nearly three times faster than the first method, but makes Alucard slightly harder to control. The increase in speed is almost always worth the trade-off with control. I basically hold the controller very loosely with my left hand. It allows the controller to rock back and forth. And then I use the ball of my thumb here to kind of hit B. And then as the controller rocks, my the tip of my thumb is going to hit Y. So um, I can get a decent speed like that. It's just letting the controller rock as you press the B with the ball of your thumb. Very easy. Uh, I don't use this very much in runs. Typically where I use it is like out of a wing smash, you know. I turn in the Alucard or I drop one and then I just have to switch really quick to shield dashing and I don't want to flip my hand around. So, you know, if I drop a shield or a wing smash or something, I can just do this real quick and then, you know, go back to doing whatever. Another method that I've seen people use, particularly like Dragon Blitz and such, is instead of keeping their hand open, they actually make their hand a fist and kind of rest their knuckle up against the controller, I guess. And But it's the same basic thing, except they use kind of a twisting motion, it seems like. So for this, you're doing this twisting motion. And obviously from the results that they've gotten, you can tell that it is a very effective method of shield dashing. So it really just kind of depends on what you feel more comfortable with. With this method, it tends to um, help out if your controller's a little loose in your left hand, as that'll facilitate kind of the bouncing motion. So that kind of helps on that end. The third method is a common one, and the second fastest method of shield dashing in my opinion. Hold the controller normally in the left hand, and then I start by clenching my fist to add more weight to my hand. This makes it easier to mash. I then flex my right arm to cause my whole arm to vibrate. This can take some practice to get down and it might feel strange at first. The trickiest part of this method is finding the correct angle to hold your thumb over both buttons that will actually produce a proper shield dash. This method increases speed by about 50% over the second method and is slightly harder to control a la carte using this method. I recommend using this method in longer hallways like in the marble gallery or in loading rooms. Basically I'm doing the same thing, hold the control loosely, except this is more like my mash method, quote unquote, um, because it's hard for me to mash with my thumb, and it would, I think it would be kind of weird to do it like this. I use like my middle finger to actually force my thumb down so I can get the same motion as the second one but I can get a little more speed out of it. Um, I haven't really integrated this into runs yet, so... And the reason is, it's a little weird to kind of switch between jumping and slashing, simply because, you know, to jump and slash, I have to jump back across, which isn't a big jump, but I have to kind of get a firmer grip on the controller. And then, like, I might end up losing time, whereas this I can just kind of switch back and forth really easily, so. As for the two-handed methods, um, I'm familiar with two of them. So the one that I use is kind of similar to Romscott's method, but it's a little bit reversed. Um, so what I do is I have particularly large hands. I think that plays a big part in this. But what I do is I basically take my left hand and I reach across and I rest it on top of the dash button, okay? So it's resting on top of that button right there. I'm trying to give you as best an angle as I can. My other hand, I put right here and I kind of curl it. You can put it flat, I kind of alternate between the two. But the basic idea of this is this rocking motion. I'm rocking the controller back and forth and that hits the buttons. So if you do this correctly, there's mechanically no way that you should ever drop a shield dash. Um, it happens sometimes, but that's because I try to speed it up, which is like this. So, you know, eventually you're going like this, and it just gets smaller and smaller until all of a sudden your method is very, or your 
the seesaw motion is very, very small. And then as far as how I do combat and stuff inside of that, which is the main problem with most two-handed methods, well, for me, because I have large hands, moving to the right is easy. I'm basically using the inside of my hand right here so that as I'm shield dashing, you look inside my hand right here. I can hit it like that. And that's how I turn to the right. Now when I need to turn to the left, that's the problem, is I can't really move my hand like that, so I do need to come back across the controller to stop it there. However, it's a pretty good method in order to get from one place to the other. Okay, So that's my two-handed shield dashing method. And that's the third one that I use. It's my fastest. It's the one that I use most of the time. But, you know, sometimes I use the one-handed methods for whatever I need. The final method is one I am not too experienced in, but I have practiced and used in runs. This is my take on the two-handed shield dashing method. Start by placing your left hand over the span of the controller and have your left index finger over the left control stick. You'll be using this finger to control turning around as a la carte. Then, place your left thumb over the Y button and place your right hand in a similar fashion as the last method, except use your right thumb only to press the B button. The same way you flex your arm to mash in the last method is what you must do for this one as well. I recommend thinking about vibrating the controller in such a way that the buttons run into your fingers, instead of thinking about trying to press the buttons manually. I consider two-handed methods to be the fastest human form of shield dashing, but is also the most difficult to perform, and they make it very difficult to control a la carte as well. I recommend testing out this method for yourself to see where it can benefit you the most. Now, Rom Scout's method, the best way that I can describe it is, so what he does is he takes his right thumb and he mostly depresses his shield button with it or gets it very close. And what he does is he's going to be mashing with his left hand and the vibration of him mashing pushes it into his thumb so he shields and his leg almost acts like a lever which gives it a little slight movement, kind of like my technique. Um, I've actually seen his controller before, and he mentions that he tapes the backside of his controller because oftentimes the battery will fall out with this method. So that kind of gives credence to my idea that it's probably like a lever motion slightly. So very basically, he goes ahead and kind of depresses this button and then mashes with his left hand. And obviously, Romscout has one of the fastest shield dashing, if not the fastest shield dashing, currently in the Soten community. And with the way he does it, he really has to jump across the controller very quickly in order to get into position and start going again. And obviously, I'm not too familiar with it, but basically, you have to get across the controller and back into position very quickly in order for this technique to work. Um, another thing that I came up with that I had been thinking about for some time now... Um, Kind of from a different angle. Once again, this Rom Scout mash is, you know, just mashing like that, giving a little wiggle. All right, so another technique that I was thinking about also was the idea of kind of mixing the two between mine and his. And for that, I would basically reach across the controller and mash with my right. I think what handedness you are, left or right, could also determine which of these two methods kind of suit you. I'm right handed, and I find that my technique tends to work pretty well for me. Um, I know, I believe Matako and Rom, who use Rom's method of shield dashing, I believe both of them are left-handed, and the fact that the stress is on your left hand to mash probably helps on that end. But, like, if I did this, I could reverse it using my thumb and mash like that for the same effect. And the same idea is there. I'm using my leg as a lever in order to do that. Um, other methods. I know that some people use a drumming method, which drumming is basically just going back and forth on there. Uh, some people can do this very quickly, especially if they're from the fighting game community. And basically, you would just jump across the controller in order to hit buttons like that. Um, obviously, I'm not the best at this. I've also seen people do a strumming method uh, between the two buttons, but I don't really like that. Um, this... This tends to produce a slower shield dashing speed in general, but again, it's not so much about the speed of your shield dash, it's about your consistency and your movement in between. And Epically Epic, for example, who uses this technique has been known for that. Um, another method that I've seen Epic use is he almost holds the controller reverse, almost like a guitar. 
So he'll like hold it upside down and put his finger on each of the buttons and he'll do it like that. And that's kind of similar to playing a guitar, I guess. So that's another way you can do it. Um, first one is two finger method. We have, um, you know, back dash on Y, shield on B, so you're just going to be doing this. And then you're going to increase the speed, get around faster. Um, the reason I do this one, this is my like absolute main method. Um, it's kind of how I started running the game, so it was the only way I could get around uh, at a decent speed. Um, comfortable for me, I just kind of came up with this weird little grip that may take some getting used to, but, you know, if you do something enough, you'll get used to it. Uh, it's very good for control areas where you're doing a lot of jumping and slashing, because jump and slash, all you're going to be doing is moving your fingers this tiny little bit um, across the button. So uh, I'll go ahead and showcase that, you know, going around, you got to slash something, jump, slash, quick turn, very easy, very uh, consistent. Uh, optimizing, you just, I mean, the unless you're moving your fingers, you don't want to be like jumping up and down all the way. So, uh, the less you move your fingers, the more you're going to get out of it, the less tiring it's going to be. So those are the shield dashing methods that I'm aware of. Um, I'm going to try to splice in some footage from other runners. Hopefully this has been at least somewhat informative for you guys. So just to go over them real quick one more time. We have the thumb flattening method. Which is just, you know, kind of flattening out your thumb. Across the d-pad. The Satoru method, which is open hand. At least for me it is. You have the kind of fist where you rest your knuckle against it for the one-handed. You have drumming, which works pretty well on a joystick as well, by the way. You have kind of a reverse guitar method. You have two-handed my way, which is with the two thumbs. Once again, the kind of back and forth motion. You have ROM's method, which is kind of depressing the B button mostly, and then mashing while making a lever out of your leg. And then again, you can always go ahead and kind of reverse that. So work it out, find out what goods or what's good for you. I'm also gonna try to post some footage with a joystick as well here as well, and kind of splice everything together so you guys can get an idea of what's happening. I'll also post videos of people who I think are respectable with their shield dashing, and they'll give you an idea of what they do with that. Okay? Good luck, guys. Things to consider when shield dashing in runs and doing multiple attempts is how strenuous particular methods of shield dashing are on your muscles. I consider the first two methods to be very easy to perform for long periods of time and not very taxing on my muscles. I believe the third method is the most taxing on my muscles and the most difficult to perform for long periods of time. The two-handed method is also very taxing, but less so due to added support by the left hand. I highly, highly recommend stretching and warming up both arms, both hands, and all of your fingers before all runs to prevent any injury or soreness afterwards. This allows for more attempts in the long run and helps prevent any health risks. One thing to practice is transitioning from one method to another seamlessly. This can help to give your muscles a break if fatigued, as well as give a last boost of speed to make up for a previous mistake. Alright, so I mentioned that I would try to get something for the joystick. Um, here it is. <laughs> so I'm not the best at doing anything with joystick inside of this, but I'll try to give you what I know. So for the purposes of this video, this is my backdash, this is my shield. Um, I know Dacid Bro, when he was playing this game, he actually rewired his joystick so that he didn't have to set it up in the options so he could save time. And he set it to basically two parallel buttons to one another. And that can definitely help out your times, um, especially if you're more familiar or comfortable going like this, like I would normally be. 
But for the purposes of this video, I didn't really want to rewire a joystick, so I'm just gonna give you a couple methods. So um, the big ones that I'm aware of, um, and I'll post the video for him as well, as I mentioned with the others. Um, so I actually came up with one when I was thinking about this also, which is almost a strumming motion back and forth between the two. And all I'm doing is just kind of running my finger back and forth. And that actually seems to work okay. I'm sure you'd want to wear a glove or something to reduce the friction so you don't get blisters all over your hands, but that is an option. Um, and what you can do with that one if you want to jump attack, just, you know, kind of move across the controller. But yeah. Um, as far as shield dashing normally is concerned, basically you'd be doing the drumming method that I mentioned before. And I'm sorry that this is quite loud, but there's not really a lot I can do about it. Uh, but yeah, you basically just drum between the two buttons. I've also seen that Dacid Bro, when he's like this, he kind of tilts his hand like this. And I think the reason why he does that is it increases the tension in his hand and kind of relieves stress on the rest of his arm. I don't know that for sure, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But I did notice that when I did tilt my hand like that, I kind of increased the tension in my hand, and that kind of helped out. Um, another thing you could do that he mentioned is, for his method at least, um, he shield dash like this, like I said before. Um, he also mentioned that when he gets tired, sometimes he'll just switch hands like that and go with those two fingers. I was thinking you could even like double up on fingers as well, uh, depending on how you mash. But just the idea of kind of changing up your muscle pattern to give your hand a rest a little bit could help out a lot. Uh, the last method that he mentioned was he said when he gets really tired, he actually goes to two hands and just goes back and forth, which actually can work out fairly well, I've been noticing. Um, it's just you got to make sure to, that you get your hand across the controller in time. So, I mean, I guess i got to kind of... Yeah, I can't really show it that well, but... Yeah. And obviously that takes quite a bit of timing to get used to it since it's not like a mechanical thing. It's just you trying to time it out. But you can get pretty quick results with that as well, which is pretty nice. So yeah, that would be it. So for shield dashing on a pad, hopefully you can rebind them a way that you like. Um, like I said, Dacid did the two parallel buttons right here rather than the two back ones. Um, and he just basically did like that. Like I said, you might want to try twisting your hand to increase the tension in your arm. If that fails, or if you get tired, you could always try with these two, or try like doubling up on fingers on one side or the other. That's another option. Um, and then lastly, you know, don't be afraid to maybe do a two-handed method and then go across. Okay. So that's going to be my primer on this. I don't currently have any footage for keyboard people yet, which is unfortunate, but I will try to add that into the video as well. Um, once again, good luck, guys. This is the stick-based uh, shield dash maneuver that has been highly requested on the internet. So the way that I do it, I've, I have the Cronus, I've, I've remapped my buttons, so I have dash here, I have shield here, and then I just, just do this. Really, 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 really fast. And if those fingers ever get tired, I just go to these fingers. And I have a backup strap for that too. If my index finger gets tired, I go to this. But that's like, that's really backup. It's not, that's not good. Normally I try to keep it to this as much as I can. And with how warm I am lately, I, I can usually do this to the whole run. But it was good for when I was still, you know, getting getting a grip on things to have a couple backup straps. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Symphony of the Night shield dashing on a stick. In this video, I'll be explaining my personal method to shield dashing and uh, wing smash with the keyboard. Now, my keyboard is a Steel Series XGB2. It's a mechanical keyboard using the black cherry switches. Um, the keycaps themselves are quite large, quite deep. Uh, let me actually uh, show you one. So these are my keycaps. Um, I can show you on this this one as well. 
Now, there are fairly large and deep keys for a keyboard. Um, I would say it works well for most video games. Um, but not actually for certain, not the best at least. Um, because if you know how the switches work, how the cherry switches, uh, the actuation point is in the middle, around that part of the switch itself. Uh, and I like, I'm used to bottoming out keys to the bottom. Um, so that means that uh, spamming is a little bit difficult, especially uh, when you consider that that you have no tactile feeling with these linear switches for when the switch actually triggers and um, the switches like the blue ones which has clicks in them uh, while you do have that tactile feeling of when the switch actually triggers it actually has other problems with spamming them and double clicking and stuff like that but anyway this is my personal method I would definitely say that I am uh, not the best at all at shield dashing. My method is not the fastest, but it's fairly consistent um, and it has got me decent times. Um, it can be better, some people probably do it better, but this is my personal way of doing it. Okay, so this is my consistent method of, of shield dashing, the one that I use most of the time. Uh, it gives me mobility, gives me uh, decent speed. Uh, my shield dashing doesn't stutter a lot. Um, there's not, not much stops in the movement, and I can turn around, slash, do fancy stuff, and jumps like that. Anyway, so this is how it looks like, first of all. Okay, how I do it? I basically use the edge of my keyboard, this lower edge right here with my thumb to align my hand so that it, it stays in relatively the same position. My middle finger and my index finger stay in this very specific position always, which is this position, right here. So what this means is that my middle finger will press uh, the O button, which is the shield for me, before my index finger goes down and presses the, the, sh the dash key. So I'm, I'm not actually doing this motion with my fingers at all. Although this is an option which, uh, which can do a fairly consistent shield dash um, at a decent speed. This is also an option, but um, depending on your finger dexterity, it can uh, cause a, a lot of fatigue. Um, I do actually use this method very, very specifically when there's a shit ton of lag. Uh, for instance, after the Minotaur Werewolf fight, after you jump up to go to the next room to get the Power of Mist, I use this during the lag, because if I spam during the lag, it sometimes, I don't know, it sometimes uh, has problems actually being fast. So I slow down my shoe dash deliberately during the lag, so that it's more consistent. With this method, this is basically the speed I go at uh, I should mention the motion of my hand comes from my wrist and a little bit from my elbow elbow it's not strenuous at all I would say I can do it for a long amount of time without any pain any strain anything like that it's a little bit it's a slight uh, seesaw motion with my uh, with my hand it's a little bit like uh, if you hold a pick and you play. Uh, it's a little bit different than that, but it uses a large portion of the arm. It's not only a sideways motion. It's not only a um, up and down motion. It's not only an elbow motion. It's a combined motion that takes large swing off of your hand. So I basically move my my entire uh, hand up and down to press the buttons and my and my thumb stabilizes my entire hand so I, and uh, as I said this this specific uh, method of shield dashing allows me to turn around and slash let me equip um, a sword so I can show you this I can turn around slash turn around slash
it's very mobile because basically I have uh, immediate access to all of my other abilities and all the other uh, face buttons uh, at least with my setup with the layout of the keys it's very consistent I would say um, one thing I should note um, if I try to vibrate my hand as you as you would do with a lot of controller methods um, because the keys have such a long travel distance from uh, from the beginning of the key from the release position to when you bottom out the keys um, it is problematic now as I said the actuation point of the switches is in the middle but it's at least for me it's very difficult to just press the key to the actuation point and release it and do it again like this is I can do it with a dash like with just one button but if you notice at my um, not at my camera but at the input display it's it sometimes misses it's not a consistent smooth spam for that I would need to bottom out the key but it's obviously not as fast. If I try to vibrate my hand with both buttons, like using different methods, you can see that sometimes it's faster, sometimes it just doesn't work. Okay. Another method that I that I've been trying to implement, that it, but I still can't do it consistently, is doing it with two hands using both of my middle fingers or it doesn't actually matter which finger of both hands or a combination of I use uh, you can do a two-handed shoe dash motion but as you can see the problem is that while it has a very high max speed it sometimes stutters and obviously the, the other problem is that it's difficult to do complex motions jumps, uh, terminal slashes and stuff like that. Um, people would say I can use my pinky to do it, but um, I find it very difficult. Um, I have theorized that it can be useful like for very long locations like um, for the military and werewolf fight, but the problem is that every one of these stops and stutters loses a lot more time than you gain by having a higher max speed than just simply doing this which is easier it's a uh, lighter on your hand doesn't have as much strain although as you can see I sometimes uh, still have problems even with this easier method a slower method of doing it is also viable that one uses a little bit of finger motion Actually, it seems like I have. I'm not as used to it anymore. But yeah, that can be useful for like races if you want to be more consistent. Um, one thing I should know that even though I I uh, use my thumb to stabilize my entire hand so that it's as uh, the motion is as similar as possible. If sometimes like this happens in Alucard stutters and stuff like that, it's good idea to just do a a few of the regular motion for a little bit of time to get going again which is unfortunate and uh, not fast but uh, that's how it goes okay special case for shield dashing is this location right here I developed this method actually very recently like a week ago for this location I deliberately uh, use a shield dashing method that makes sure that I travel the exact distance at the exact speed I want. Now it's not super fast, but because of the consistency it gives me, it is it ends up being much more beneficial than just me spamming away. And it goes like this. Okay, let me just kill this guy. What this method does is I bottom out the wall. Please. 
uh, I bottom out the keys in a rhythm of shield dash, shield dash, shield dash, shield dash for four for um, cycles. That gives me, that gets me from the bottom of a uh, one of these uh, staircases to the top of it without me hitting the monster that's waiting for me at the top. Not for this section, obviously. <laughs> 